Now, I'm going to show you, uh, in this teaching, I'm going to show you all the chaos that's going around in our world. And I'm going to show you, through all these sources of all this chaos coming out, why a lot of people, a lot of people, they're actually getting frustrated. So even though this is a crisis situation where it looks like the New World Order is going to take over, I notice also it is starting this wave where people are studying up. Yeah. And they're, why? Because of the frustration bound by the government restricting them on a lot of things. So there's a lot of complaint and frustration rising up. And because of that, they're studying and they're seeing more of the truth and the facts. So it's becoming an eye-opener. And what I want is, if people are getting into that, that I pray that they'll receive the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation by seeing, hey, there's so much insidious things when looking at all these facts. There's something going on over here, and that you'll switch toward, there must be some hope. There's got to be something good out there, and you'll find out that Bible-believing preachers, ever since from the past 2,000 years of church history, have always been those people who preached against the corruption that has been occurring throughout all governments. But another thing to realize is that those Bible-believing Christians throughout the past 2,000 years of history, you'll also find out is that even though we preach against the corruption that goes around in our government, that we don't become violent people where the mainstream media tried to accuse us of terrorism and violence and killing people. We do not condone that. We are totally against that. And if any of you are doing that, do not do that, please. Because you're just costing people souls more. That's right. All right, so here's the chaos that's occurring throughout our world. The title of this article is COVID-19 has now killed more Americans than the Vietnam War. That's what it claims. Uh, this is by Curtis Lee. The article reads, more than 58,300 Americans have died from COVID-19 according to a tally kept by John Hopkins University that compares with the National Archives figure of 58,220 deaths from the Vietnam War. Now, do I believe in these numbers? To be quite honest, not really. I don't really believe in that, but I'm still researching it. And there's a lot of uh, sources out there that talk about that the numbers are stretched, and actually even mainstream news has pointed out and confessed that th these numbers are really loose. They're really stretching it. And a lot of medical doctors have spoken out against that and got upset at Fauci and all that. But anyways, my point over here is not proving the numbers. It's showing the concern that's rising. It's showing the concern. Whether you agree with this number, you're still concerned. If you don't agree with this number, you are concerned because you're like saying, no, that ain't true, you know? <laughs> So either or, it's showing the concern. Supposedly more than the Vietnam War, they cried out. So whether you believe it or not, it doesn't change the fact. The fact remains that the concern is growing. And because of this numerous concerns that I'm going to point out that's going around in our world, it's reaching at a lot of people being upset and taking action. Here's another thing that's upsetting. I'm going to show you the chaos. We're seeing prophecy fulfilled during this time, immediately during this time. I'm going to show you all kinds of stuff. Now, this was given by, uh, this is in a tweet, and I found this from one of our brethren, and this is by Mayor Bill de Blasio, New York City Mayor. Now, you know what he said? This is just, you can tell we're getting there, the yeah. time of the end. It's yeah. getting so wicked. Now, remember, the Antichrist, the, spi the Antichrist spirit is what? It is against the nation of Israel. Yeah. It is a spirit that is against the nation of Israel. That is an Antichrist spirit. That's why we can know that we are getting closer to the tribulation is by seeing that. So look at this. He tweeted, To the Muslim New Yorkers beginning their celebrations tonight who need halal meals, we have them across our 400-plus grab-and-go meal sites and are bringing hundreds of thousands more to the 32 sites most frequented by our Muslim communities. Wait a minute, what about the churches, you know? I thought we're not all for like hoarding up a lot of people in crowds. 
And there have been reports about Muslim mosques still running yeah. towards the people. But the, it's strange, isn't it, that the news, they concentrate on any Christian pastor out there, yeah. when you can point out a lot of other things. That shows bias. Yeah. Here's another, you know what he says about the Jews? The mayor says to the Jews, my message to the Jewish community and all communities is this simple. The time for warnings has passed. I have instructed the NYPD to proceed immediately to summons or even arrest those who gather in large groups. This is about stopping this disease and saving lives, period. Look at all this chaos going on. You can tell we're getting toward the end. Now, this is from Yahoo News. And the t <laughs> now, you can see this chaos that's going on more and more and more. So look at the result. This is the result that's coming out. It's spurting out. The title of this article from Yahoo News is by Caitlin Dixon, April 28, 2020. The title is, what do you think people are doing? They're getting frustrated. They're starting to be enticed by the conspiracy theories. Now, I want to say this is that obviously you have to be careful with stuff online and a lot of misinformation, a lot of misinformation. But here's the fact that remains. The fact that remains is people are getting upset and concerned, and that's why these conspiracy stuff is getting enticing to people. So look at the result here. The title of the article, I kind of laughed, is this. Coronavirus conspiracy theories make Fauci the villain because someone has to be. So look at mainstream news complaining about that. Let's keep reading some in interesting stuff here. Ultimately, the experts warn the mistrust that is fomented by conspiracy theories poses... Now look at this. Look at what the mainstream world is going to take advantage of. Your pastor, he doesn't believe in misinformation, but when facts are facts... Look, you can't just say conspiracy theory on every information that's true out there with the misinformation. By doing that, see, they cloud it where people can't use critical thinking to find what's true and false. Why? Because it's dubbed conspiracy. That's the same thing what they do with fundamentalist Christians, right? They use terms to cloud it so people can't use critical thinking to see, no, there's a distinction here. We're not all called Christian fundamentalists in the sense of blowing each other up and using violence. Amen. When they start to use terms on you, you better use critical thinking rather than gullible mindset. Oh, it's called, it's called over here conspiracy theory. It's called Christian fundamentalist. That's why you students can't use your, half your brain when you're studying your textbooks. You know why? You study more on the term, to, the terms that they give you to pass rather than using critical thinking to see why is that. Yeah. See, when they use terms, you can cloud everything, just like a Calvinist with his debate, talking in terms, you know, and Aaron Ra pretending to be a scientist when yeah. he's not, and then he uses terms where he can go away from this. Yeah. See, that's, that's wicked people. That's dishonest people. Dishonest people spreading misinformation. Quote, ultimately, the experts warn that mistrust that is fomented by conspiracy theories poses real dangers to health and public safety. Now, look how this is uh, going to be the excuse. You can picture this is going to be the excuse for the new world order to persecute believers and Christians because they're dubbing this with the conspiracy theorists, guys. In addition to the increased affinity for violence that often accompanies belief in conspiracy theories, see that, what they're doing? Lamberty noted that her research has found that, quote, distrust of power also influences choice of medical procedures. According to her, the more inclined someone is to believe conspiracy theories, the more likely they are to reject the use of conventional medical treatments such as vaccination and antibiotic therapy. In times of a global pandemic, people who believe in such conspiracy theories might not only... Look at this. Why do we have to take more forceful action? People who believe in such conspiracy theories might not only endanger themselves but put other people at risk. See, when you use a health excuse for the safety of people, that's why you can justify mandatory action. 
Let me keep reading here. Here's another article by CNBC. Before I covered the article by CNBC, let's sum up everything going on over here. So there's an antagonism toward Israel. There's an antagonism where they combine Christian churches with conspiracy theorists. And then they combine that with what? Violence. That is a threat to safety. You can see how the Antichrist can definitely take action on this as an excuse. Listen, we do not believe in violence, endangerment, or rebellion against the government where we take violence in action. But you got to realize this, is that these people that you do point out Yes, you can find out people who uh, did violent measures, that they were watching some conspiracy theories online. But what about plenty of like Antifa or the liberals over here where they were studying in your liberal universities? So is it logical and rational to say, because of what you're teaching in your universities about, you know, the environment is dying out and global warming, that people who believe in that have the tendency to go Antifa mode and liberals by burning down buildings yeah. and beating up people? Yeah. That ain't logic. Cuckoo, cuckoo. That's not critical thinking. That's poor graduate work, and some of these are professors who talk like that. Man, you, you don't really mean that. Come on. How, how about if we tied a lot of the people who attended your schools, huh, professors? I bet you we can find a whole bunch of students or people who came from your schools. And should we say, because they took your classes, they studied in your schools, the stuff that you're teaching is causing them to be violent? Come on. See, that ain't fair. Yeah. That's not honest information and honest critical thinking. Now, here's another chaos that's going around. Title of the article by CNNBC by Natasha Turok. And this is not, uh, so what I'm going to say is a lot of uh, people online would already know. Pentagon declassifies three UFO videos taken by Navy pilots. This ain't a secret anymore. This ain't conspiracy theory anymore. This is now reaching mainstream. The declassification of the videos late Monday was meant to clear up any misconceptions by the public. Uh, let's skip over here. The footage which shows the footage which shows unidentified objects flying at high speeds in the Earth's atmosphere, along with audio of Navy pilots expressing shock and awe, was initially leaked in 2007 and 2017. Now, think about it. That's when a lot of people were trying to point out a lot of the insidious things and strange things that's going on with our government. That's why a lot of them are dubbing that conspiracy theory and taking action to withhold it. Why? Because this information is getting out there where people are seeing, of course, misinformation, but they're seeing facts and truth as well. And they're saying, look, this is not everything like we've learned at our schools or governments telling us. So because of that pressure, what, what do they do? Because of that, they had to investigate it. The Pentagon statement, the Pentagon statement reads this. The U.S. Navy previously acknowledged that these videos circulating in the public domain were indeed Navy videos. Wow. After a thorough review, the department has determined that the authorized release of these unclassified videos does not reveal any sensitive capabilities or systems and does not impinge on any subsequent investigations of military airspace, incursions by unidentified aerial phenomena. How about that? So because it's not a threat to, so to speak, toward their national security or something like that, they can allow some things to be declassified over there. So at least there's some freedom going around. There's some freedom going around. But that freedom's not going to last any longer. That's right. mm -hmm. yeah. So people who are watching, some you got to think about this. That's why the Bible says, now is the time, now is the day of salvation. These things should make you wake up that, look, we're living in a system and a machine. And I can't just be a slave, just blindly believing everything that I hear. 
I got to realize there's something insidious, there's something corrupt, and I'm going to realize that the only thing that can clear our government is not by our own actions of violence or hatred. It is by what Jesus Christ said. You give the gospel to other people. You show the love of Jesus Christ. You show respect to those in authority because it's not all corrupt. Otherwise, we would live in a world of chaos, see? So there is some law and order, so to speak. So that's why the Bible allows Romans 13. But aside from that, there is a lot of other corruptions that we don't comply or agree with. And what we do with all this information is try to get you now to wake up out of your slavery system world Amen. and find freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. And why yes. don't you get saved, huh? Yes. Because just knowing all this and getting mad at the government, is you're still going to be a slave to Satan's system yeah. and die and burn in hell if you don't receive Christ for your salvation, friend. Amen. And I'm saying this out of love. Amen. All right, let's keep reading. The Pentagon's release of the video remo removes speculation as to whether they were real. So they say this is real and genuine. And is sure, so this is what the reporter admitted, is sure to spur deeper questioning concerning the existence of the extraterrestrial life and human interaction with it. Quote, there's a whole fleet of them. My gosh, they're all going against the wind. The wind is 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude, a pilot ex exclaims in one of the videos. The U.S. Navy actually began formalizing a reporting process last year for pilots to report incidents of UFO sightings. See, this is factual. Saying in an April 2019 statement that there have been a, quote, number, 2019 statement. A number of reports of unauthorized and or unidentified aircraft entering various military controlled ranges and designated airspace in recent years. Not just during the World War II days or etc., even recently. These kind of incursions can be both a security risk and pose a safety hazard for both Navy and Air Force aviation for safety and security concerns. The Navy and the USAF takes these reports very seriously and investigates each and every report. So this is bringing concern to people. But you know what the Bible says when you look at Revelation chapter 12? Revelation, what's going on is it's conditioning, desensitizing people. So what's going to happen is this, is that first it is a major concern. Why? Because this is fresh and new. But this is what your pastor thinks. Your pastor thinks that there's going to be a flood more of admittance that this is real UFO oh, yeah. and then when you combine with this with these famous atheist scientists and agnostic scientists like Neil like Neil deGrasse and then you also cover all these other people where all these atheist scientists and agnostics and Richard Dawkins and these uh, Stephen Hawking's etc they're going to bridge that with evolution and they're going to bridge that there can be a higher life form out there yeah. So it's going to decondition people, and then you got the religious community who already believes in angels and spirits as a positive thing coming out. And Revelation 12 says what? The dragon and his angels fall from the universe to the earth, and when they land on the earth, everybody around the world sees that and accepts them and worships yep. the dragon. It's Revelation 12. So your pastor's predicting that a lot more information is going to go out there. If not in our time era, it's very possible there can still be denial, and we might not see that at our time, but I guarantee at the tribulation by that time, they're going to be desensitized. Mm -hmm. They're going to be conditioned, ready to accept. So this is just a step, yeah. and we can see that because this is a step toward accepting UFOs, where people are going to acknowledge it's real, then we're getting even a step closer to the end times. Mm -hmm. With all of this going around our world, you can see that people are saying, well, you know what? I think some of the stuff that I'm hearing is actually true. So I'm going to take action, especially since they're mad about what's going on around with this coronavirus situation and how our world is handling it. So if you actually look at the official website of petitions.whitehouse.gov, this is very, very wow. That's all I'm going to say. It's a very, very wow moment, which I didn't realize. This is a lot. How many signatures needed for the petition of, we call for investigation?
investigations into the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for medical malpractice and crimes against humanity. Now that's pretty strong. The goal is 100,000 as goal. You know how many signed it? 461,106. That's nearly half a million. And I bet you it's, uh, this is a number that I pulled up old, so it might have gone up now. Here's another one, 100,000 goal. Impeach Nancy Pelosi for crimes of treason. How many? 359,095 signed. Pass, surpass the 100,000 goal. Now, this is Satan's greatest victory. Listen up now. Satan's greatest victory is that this is why Bible-believing churches, that this is where we differ from the conspiracy theory realm, is that we, we ignore misinformation. We only take what's fact. And we can see that fulfilled in Scripture. And we pointed out that, hey, for 2,000 years, we've been t already telling you about that. That's what we do. That's very, very different. Why? Because we're doctrinal. We're biblical. We worship God. Our whole life is not rebelling and getting angry at the government. Amen. As a matter of fact, we're not even worried of the mark of the beast, but it's not the mark of the beast. Amen, we got, it ain't, it ain't going to happen. We're going to be raptured before the tribulation. This, this ain't the mark of the beast yet. This is a precursor. You know why? Because we've already seen too many of this. Yeah. Look, Gates is not new with Vaccines ID 2020. That ain't new. We've seen too many of that already before with Social Security card, credit cards, the barcodes underneath the cereal boxes. But guess what? Humanity needs that to what? Live and survive. See? So we don't worry about a Bible-believing Christian if he takes a vaccine or not. If we get some uh, Bible-believing people in our church and their family and they had children who took vaccines, we're not going to call them, hey, you're part of the Antichrist system, get out. No, we don't do that. And if a person doesn't put vaccine on their family, we don't get on them either. You know what we go by? We just go by the Bible. The Bible what it talks about how to live our everyday life in peace and love. So what's very sad is you can see the distinction from us with a lot of people getting into conspiracy theories. Now look, I sympathize with the people who are upset with a lot of corruption in our government, so don't misunderstand me, but I'm going to show you a sad truth. By digging so much into this one, this is the petition about declare churches synagogues and houses of worship essential organization in such cases of national emergency. You know how many petitions signed? 100,000 as a goal. You get not just Christian churches, but all different religions. You know how much it is in total? 5,981. Wow. Where's your focus? Wow. Where's our focus? Where's our focus? I hope that this video will give you the right focus, get you back on track that, look, if you're accept if you're upset about all the corruption going around in Satan's world, yeah. don't fall prey into that. Yeah. Don't, you're still going to fall prey into that. You know why? It is because you're not living your life for Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's the ultimate goal of Satan, whether you're upset for the government or even compliant with the government. It doesn't matter to him. His goal is where you still serve him and make him happy when your life is not worshiping and serving Jesus Christ.